Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for health. We thank you for being able to see, to breathe, or being able to hear and touch and walk. We're able to talk. We're able to think. So many things to be thankful for. And in the midst of all these things that are going around us, we are so grateful for keeping us for protecting us, know that uh, we are not uh, out of danger, but so far, Lord, we appreciate uh, to this moment everything that you have done for us, yes. whether we Thank see God. it or we don't. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, yes, our Sanctifier, the one who is the head of the church. We thank Amen. you for that tonight for giving us this a uh, moment as we uh, enter into your word, uh, speak to us, help us, challenge us, yes, God. and uh, supply the needs, whatever the needs are located. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 Okay, so we don't have too much time to review, except that as we have entered into the, into the class, because uh, none of you are new, so you know what we are talking about. Uh, about the prodigal son, the lessons of the prodigal son, uh, the main points that we have tried to actually uh, make clear is that as long as we are uh, in God's presence, we are protected from uh, the one who wants to harm us spiritually, which is Satan. Uh, the devil knew that as long as he as he stayed in the house, he could not do anything. So he wanted the prodigal son out of the house. And uh, we saw that he he did. He made it the wrong choice. Uh, he had the, the uh, to be specific, he had the resources. The father gave him uh, all those things. And uh, instead of actually appreciating it that was something uh, good with it, he decided to go and spend it and uh, not to have his father tell him what to do or how to do it or how to invest whatever he had. So he left and uh, it was a choice that he made. So we dealt with uh, the thought of the doctrine of uh, Balaam in the Old Testament in which it was more or less the same way. I get out of God's presence and I will curse you. I will curse you. And uh, that's what happened to the prodigal son. Now, uh, when the prodigal son goes out, uh, the blessing follow him for a little while. Okay? I don't think he uh, wasted it. In one day's time, this is a story. And uh, it's a parable. So the blessing uh, follow him for a while because the Bible says, as we read in, in chapter 15, that um, he took his journey into a far country, into a far country. So I read into into these words, he traveled. He didn't get there overnight. And there, wasted his substance. He wasted it with a riotous living. Just a thought, whatever we have received from God, let us invest it in the right way. Talents, whatever the Lord has given us. Health. Uh, you young people appreciate your health appreciate your youth because uh, being young is something that you just do not stay there you're going to get older and uh, you're not going to be uh, functioning as good as you're functioning now there's a difference between your 20s and your 30s and uh, from your 30s to your 40s, and uh, let us leave it there. Um, 
some of them will say amen, but they don't want to say it because they're going to get themselves out. So, <laughs> so uh, there's a difference here. Uh, we need to appreciate time. Time is the most precious commodity, commodity that we have. Time is valuable. I read about Onassis, uh, this rich Greek man who married the ex-wife of John Kennedy. And when he got sick, they say that he would tell doctors that he would give them anything they wanted, millions and millions of dollars, just to give him a few more weeks of life. So we think that uh, in our position, I'm talking to you young people now, the younger uh, people, you under 30, okay? Uh, you will not always enjoy what you have health-wise. That is going to diminish. That uh, even, even though you may look at it and say, oh, but I have a long time ahead of me. I'm only 20, so I have 10 more years. Well, you don't really know how long you have because you can have an accident, okay? We have seen young people actually die with COVID. So uh, let's use what we have now. You young people, the longer that you wait to serve God is the less time that you will have to actually enjoy the best things on this side of the world. There's a, a book that one of the most damaging preachers today uh, in United States, that is Joel Osteen, oh. uh, wrote a book that actually made him very famous. Uh, your best, you can have your, your best life now. And actually, if you believe that, it's true. It's true what he says. If you're not saved, this is the best life you're going to have. Because what awaits you on the other side of eternity, on, on this side of this world, is, is hell. Okay, So this is the best life you're going to have if you don't have Christ. But we thank God that uh, we don't get saved just to go to heaven. I believe that uh, we should want to be saved to enjoy things on this side of eternity. Uh, there's so many things. And uh, I believe that I'm a witness. This because I, I was saved when I was about 14 years old. 14. And uh, I look back. I went through uh, those years. I went to school, high school. Everything else I studied and I went through uh, marriage. I have, we have had our daughters, grandchildren. And I look back and I said, I don't have nothing to repent of. And the thought of why did I, why did I not enjoy more of the things of the world? I don't need it. I don't need. I think that I can learn from what I see. I think that I don't have to experiment something to actually become convinced. If you see and God allows you to see the other side, you don't want to go to the other side because you're going to have to face uh, a lot of things in this life and you're going to face it without God. You're going to face him without a savior, without peace, without joy, without hope. The prodigal son didn't think about that, okay? So according to what we read, he wasted everything. He used it in the wrong way. So I asked the question, if we are wasting our energy, and in what are we wasting our energy? Uh, if we are wasting uh, the opportunities they are given to us. Uh, if we are wasting things that really are going to damage us. And there's a, a scripture in the book of James. If you would please open your Bibles. 
James 4, where the Apostle James deals with a few thoughts here. Very interesting thoughts. Yeah, I, you know what I did? I already... He says here uh, in verse one, it's a question that he, that he asked people that were professing and people that were not right with God. He says, any one of you want to read it? I know that most of the time, you, Kevin, you, you're ready. So, some others. Uh, what verse? Long. Begin in verse one. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Keep going. Go ahead. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Yeah, you lust. In other words, you desire, but you don't have. Mm. I mean, what you're looking for in the world, you, you lost after you want it. You think if I buy this car, I'll be happy. If I make so much money and then everything be okay, but really you desire these things, but at the same time, he says you you have not. I mean, what you what you have, what you're looking for in that car, what you're looking for in a relationship, whatever you're looking for uh, in in anything in the world, what you're looking for is not with you. You don't get it like that. Uh, it says you kill. And desire to have. Mm -hmm. And cannot obtain. They could not obtain. What you could not obtain? Well, what you are really looking for. Hmm. Okay, help me here. What is what people want most in life? What is the whole fuss about? What is the whole purpose of people's struggles? What are they after? What, what do they want? They want a happy life and riches, I assume, like the world most common thing, I would say. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Desires Feel free. for the flesh. Hmm? Desires for the flesh. Okay. Desires for the flesh. I, I got it. Anybody else? They want what success. really is the whole thing about? They want to be successful. To have they want to be off. Yeah. To have houses, cars, fame, money. Okay. Yeah. But okay, I understand all that, and that's true. But behind all those things, what is it? Peace. They want to feel. They yeah. want to feel fulfilled, I think, in every in, in, in their yeah, interpretation of they want a sense of happiness, happiness, happiness. happiness. to be joyful, happiness. to be and it's not really the car that they're after. It's, they think that the car is gonna give them this, or or the house or the property or anything else. What they are looking for is what they think that those things are gonna give them a sense of uh, satisfaction a sense of uh, belonging, finally I got it. Uh, people love the applause, uh, um, actors and singers, they love their, their fans, but it's not really what they want. Mm -hmm. What they want is the feeling of being uh, happy. Uh, and they think that it is going to be produced by fans or applause and things. But the question comes up, if that is really what makes them happy, why most of them are in drugs? True. Why they, ha they have to go to drugs? Because that's mostly, I have a list. I don't know if I'd be able to actually read it to you. Uh, I took the time to check some of them. I'm going to read some of them to you. Uh, Hilary Duff, Mr. Spielberg, Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Christina Aguilera, Shakira, Jennifer Lopez, Go Go Dolls, 
Bare Naked Girls, Shaquille O'Neal, Ricky Williams, Little Kim. Uh, in those days, Princess uh, Diana, Elvis Presley, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Britney Spears, Madonna, even Celia Cruz, Ricky Martin, mm. Shirley MacLaine, Barbara Walters, and I can go on and on and on. There are thousands of them in the list. And all of them actually very unhappy and very broken people. They put a good face, okay? And they are applauded by the public and they think that uh, success is the key. Success is not the key, mm -hmm. okay? If not, they will be very happy people, but they are not. Most of them, are under the care of psychiatrists, okay? Drugs, some of them have gone into, uh, to the Tibet over there looking for monks, staying there for months and months looking for that so-called inner peace. Mm. And they just don't get it. They just don't get it. So the prodigal son is looking for something that he thought would be what he was looking for. That apparently he did not appreciate when he was to the house. Now, when he really appreciates that, it's when he goes to the bottom. Mm. The bottom, when he hits bottom, then he really, his mind clears up because the Bible says that he came to himself. Then he was able to think clearly. Now, um, as we think of that, I think also about the, um, the scriptures that we are reading over here. Um, you, Kevin, you were reading it or was somebody else? It was me, Alex. Okay, will you please keep reading? Um, ye fight in war, yet ye have not. You have not? Because, yes, because ye ask not. Because you ask not. Ask who? You will come to me, God says. Lord, give me what I need. I'm not happy. I feel miserable. Amen. Why do you feel that way? It's the absence of God in your life. That's what it is. Yes? Brother Alex, uh, you know, there, there's a, a verse in the Bible that is such a important to our Christian life, which is if we live according to the flesh, we shall die. Right. But if we live according to the spirit, it is life and peace. Mm -hmm. Our soul, our soul feels feels so at, at ease and at and it feels a calmness and a joy to know that you're doing things in the spirit. Well, Close to God, reading the word, praying, doing the things that God loves us to do. And it just brings a very beautiful satisfaction to the soul. Definitely. And the reality of it all is that we have a conscience, a conscience that we cannot buy or compromise. Mm -hmm. Conscience is there. He's calling the balls and the strikes. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, God has put in our in our in our very soul. Um, so in in the story of the prodigal son, we know what happened. He how he went down. Uh, this is really the story of every human being, how God sees us. Uh, this story or parable teaches us two types of life. The life without God and the life with God. Now, the life with God is not being religious. It's not believing in the Bible. It's not believing in the history of Christ dying, resurrecting, because you can believe all that. The Bible says that the devil believes and he trembles. So when I'm saying the life with God, like I was reading today, and these are scriptures that, of course, I have read so many times, so have you. What Paul is talking about, mm -hmm. Christ in you. 
Christ in you. That's a statement that we need to really meditate on that. That's what being a Christian is all about. It's not believing in Christ. Yes, you, you have to believe in him, but you have to move him from your, from your, from your head to your heart, through repentance, through faith. He needs to come in and make his residence in you uh, because God is not a God of weekends. We need to understand that mm. God is not a God of weekends. Wow. A lot of people that prefer Christianity, they have a weekend type of relationship. They think with God. They go Sunday and they wash their hands off. So he's not a God of weekends. He, he's a God that is very much uh, interested in being your life. Can you keep reading, uh, Brother Alejandro? Yeah. Yes, sir. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Yes. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Do you remember? Uh, let me put this scripture here. And it's what is going to, uh, to ring a bell in your mind. He says, you ask wrong. Yes. Some people say, but I have prayed. And God has not given me what I pray for. You remember what Jesus said? What father, what a good father, if his son asks him for an egg, he will, he will give him a serpent. You remember that? Or what father, if his son asks him for um, a fish, he will give him something else. How many times we have prayed for something and God says, no, I cannot give it to you. Amen. Because what you're looking at, it looks like bread, but really it's a snake. And if I give it to you, it's going to bite you. And when people keep insisting on something, God says, go ahead and have it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and have it. One of the worst things for us is to ask amiss or wrong and keep insisting on that to the point that God says, okay, I will give it to you. But there are consequences. You remember when the people of Israel asked for a king? They said, we want a king, wow. we want a king, we want a king. I said, okay, I'll give you one. But remember what's going to happen to you later. God gave them what they wanted. And one of the worst things for us is to ask things out of the will of God. Because God could give you what you want. And it's not going to be for your blessing or your happiness. It's going to be for your own downfall which is very important. These are thoughts just for, uh, for you to, to actually uh, chew on it. Uh, uh, go ahead, who wants to talk? No, no, that's a, that's a really, yeah, that's, that's a good one, because I've been, yeah. I've been, yeah, 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 Lord, please give me, okay. give, give me, give me that one, give me that sister. Mm. Um, <laughs> She's so sweet. Well, really, you don't know. Have you ever lived with it? <laughs> Are you willing to go all the way at the end? Look at her mom because she's going to look like her mom does. Look like the daddy. <laughs> and sometimes I think. Are you dealing to? Are you willing to deal with the those extra eighty pounds that she's going to gain? Somebody says, you are a cynic. I'm not a cynic. In the it's thought true. is that people <clears throat> don't see. They don't see beyond their nose. Mm. And they say, but what happened? Well, you had the future right there in front of you. And the, th the same thing can happen to a man. You know, a muscle man, you know, 
you know, the weights and he looks great, you know. Yeah, some of you are grinning from ear to ear. Yeah, oh, wow, he's really something, that's right. But you know, a lot of the muscle may become flabby later. Okay, and that stomach can actually become so large they will be over the belt. By the time that he hits 60 and you still be married to him, he said, what happened to you? He said, well, the same thing happened to you. Have you looked at yourself? <laughs> oh, man. Mm. All right. Going to do you I know how many, how many mistakes oh, okay. have been made? You know how many uh, issues I have to deal with? through my ministry and looking at things, mistakes that were made. And uh, sometimes we, we actually made those mistakes. We have to be thankful to God that in the midst of all those things, God lift us up yes. and gave us one more chance. And we need to appreciate that. We need to appreciate wow. that. Amen. 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 So whatever times I have left, I am not going to make the same mistake again. I'm going to be very careful where I put my foot on. So the prodigal son uh, actually makes this big mistake because he did not see what he had. He didn't see what he had. He did not see his position either. So let me rephrase it so that you will rhyme. He didn't see his possession and he did not see his position. He did not see who he was with. He was with the father. He didn't see it. He just didn't see it. So he goes and he wanted the freedom he wanted to be in control. I know that we dealt with that again. I know that I'm repeating that. But listen to this. What liberty and calamity is. The liberty that the devil offered has a high price that we have to pay. God does not tie you down. He will give you uh, whatever is that you want, God doesn't run after people. God talks to you, he whispers to you. He doesn't holler, he whispers. If you hear his voice, uh, I am at the door and knock. He didn't say, if you don't open, I'll break the door down. He could, very easily, wow, he can send you to the hospital and put a couple of hoses in your nose so you can breathe. But he <laughs> will, will just whisper to you, listen to me, I'm talking to you, it's me. Um, we know, some of us can testify to that, that the pleasure of the world uh, will actually make you lose sight of the tragedy that is coming, the tragedy of being away from God. So he didn't have too much time to, to think, to meditate, where he was gonna end up, how he was messing up his life, that his liberty, his so-called liberty was a passing liberty. Hebrews 11, 24, and you, uh, I keep repeating to you, uh, young people, because you are in a lot of danger. Some of us have learned the lesson, okay? And uh, we have a tremendous teaching in what Moses did when Moses was persecuted and he was mis and he tried to do right and uh, he made come some mistakes uh, a lot of times people think that Moses uh, was always, always uh, a champion from the beginning no 
he was not, and he had quite a few things against him because his speech was handicapped. Uh, in Hebrews eleven twenty four, anyone wants to read it? I'll read it. Go ahead. Um, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing uh. rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin, of sin, are just for a while. Okay. Now, how in the world do you choose affliction than possession to be called uh, as the son of Pharaoh, like a prince? He was actually a prince, and he refused that. And he said, you know what, I could, I could be, maybe, who knows, one day a pharaoh. But he chose affliction. So he had a vision. How was he able to do that? How can you do that? How can you change, change your path? Unless you're seeing something that others don't see. So would you please? Pray to God and say, please, God, anoint my eyes that I may see. What happened? How he was able to make this decision? There are two points there. Will you please, uh, Sister Madison, go back? Oh, was it Ricardita? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, you kind of sound like the Sister Madison. Okay, Sister Ricardita, <laughs> what does it say? Uh, again, the 24. Yes. By faith, Moses, when he was come to okay, years. Okay, no, number one, number one, we need to have faith. We need to have faith. If you don't have faith, you are in trouble. What else? He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused. Now, how come? How was he able to do this? There must have been a reason to refuse that. What does it say? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Okay. How was he able to do this? Number one, by faith. Number two, keep reading. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Uh -huh. for, he, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Uh -huh. by, really? faith, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. There you are. He had what? A vision. He had a vision of what God would give him in the long, in the long term. Okay? It's what is at the end of the road that matters. And he saw that. He saw it. He had faith. And he chose to suffer. Now, this is a tremendous word that it is hard for the millennium, millennial um, generation to actually get it. Because we want things easy, uh, no much effort, give it to me, I, I deserve it. You don't deserve anything. It's like, uh, you know, when we have children, and uh, parents go out of their way and uh, they treat the children like they are princes and princesses. And I, I show, uh, we, sh we taught our children, you are just members of this family, just like I am and your, and your mother. You are part of the family. We are not here to serve you. Come on. You have responsibilities. 
that bed, I'm not going to make it up for you. You make it. Some my mom says, I'm tired of picking up these pullovers and these shorts and this thing for the floor. Well, stop, don't pick them up anymore. Let them pick them up. Let them walk all over and fall and trample on them. Well, they go into the room and you know they have a mess there. Take off the door. And you're going to see some changes. Oh, yes. Well, I am, I'm, what I'm doing here, I am, um, I'm, I'm taking their, their privacy away. Who is paying for the bill? Who is paying for the bill? Who is paying for the light bill? Who is feeding them? Who is washing their clothes? And you are going to tell me that they have a sign on the door saying, enter at your own peril? That they have a sign that says, keep out? That they have a sign that says, knock before you enter? Oh, no, I'm going to come in before I knock. I want to see what's going on in this room. In fact, I'm going to check on your mattress. I said, well, I'm glad that I was not one of your children. And I am so glad that I was not your father. See, when you hear this, you say, you are so out of the orbit. Brother Alex Figueroa, wake up. This is now back in the dinosaurs time. We have lost sense of reality, okay? We have lost sense of reality. The world is upside down and I don't have nothing against the young people. I believe that mostly the ones are to blame are the parents because parents, uh, somebody asked me one time, when should I start teaching my children? I say nine months before they are born. Nine months before they are born, start teaching them. What I'm saying with that, teach yourself first. So as we look at this picture here, this picture is a revelation of a spiritual condition. Today in the world, the world is applauding the prodigal sons. Wow, you made it, finally, you left. And they are applauded. Because on the outside, they don't look that like prodigal sons. Not because of the cars that they are driving. Today, the person that prospers in his business is applauded by society. When he puts on his, a, a, a coat or, a, or um, a suit that costs a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars, people applaud that type of people. Look at that! Look at the shoes, Italian shoes. That man is a prosper. I want to be that man without knowing the battle that that man has in his soul. Because sooner or later, most of the people that are applauded today and looked up to, they are prodigals. They are prodigal sons away from God. And you see this, and this is really sad. Because I have seen, and I talk to my wife about this, and sometimes I have preached or made reference to it. Sometimes you have to go to uh, uh, one of these nursing homes, and you see some of those old people in wheelchairs fighting among each other, throwing the wheelchairs one against the other, fighting like mad. You would think that when they get old, they'll get sweet. They don't. They are full of rage, bitterness. And uh, that's something that I have seen so many times. No one case, but so many cases. What shows me that as people get older, not necessarily they get sweeter. You would think so. Well, they don't in most cases. 
And if they are sweet, it's because they can't talk anymore. Or they will let you have it with their tongue. And to understand that, you have to be in my shoes when I have been in many of the prisons in Miami. No, no serving time. But I have been called to preach. I have served in, in prisons, preaching for years at a time, having service with inmates with murderers. And uh, when we used to go over there on a weekly basis, this is what I heard every time. When you come here, you are different to all those preachers that come here. Yes. They tell us things that we want to hear. When you come here, you tell us the truth. And quite a few of them got saved. So I have seen what a murderer does. I have seen rich people that the lawyers were stealing money from them and in a moment of rage, they got a gun and killed their lawyer right there in the office because I talked to them personally. I have seen people's life being ruined. Young people's life completely broken. And when you begin to, begin to investigate what do you see? Wrong decisions. Getting mixed up with the wrong people. This is what happened to the prodigal son. Not only he got wrong, not only he got mixed up with the wrong people, he got mixed up with the wrong animals. Because he ended up not with horses. He ended up with pigs. That was an unclean, the most detested and unclean job that a Jew or a Hebrew person could have because a pig was an unclean was an unclean animal according to the law so he is there now among the the pigs the mud is between his toes and hunger sets in Hunger sets in. First of all, hunger among men, hungry among pigs. And I want to actually tell you that many of these pigs don't always have four feet or hoofs. Oops. Many of them have two feet, religious pigs. There are many churches that have become pigsties. God help. You listen to what I'm saying. So the Bible says that in verse 15, that in that land where he was, hunger set in. Verse 15, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. That's verse 15. Verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly. In other words, he was hungry, but he wanted to actually eat what the pigs were eating. And that's what sin will do to you if you don't wake up real fast. And believe me, he said, but I will never be there like that. That's like a homeless. No, that's worse. We're dealing here with a soul. And we are not dealing here with not having a home or, or being dirty and filthy. We're talking here about what happens to your soul. And I said, again, you can have a you can be driving a Jaguar, you can be driving a Ferrari, you can be having the best clothes in town, and you can be a prodigal and your soul is in rags. 
and you are among pigs, or you can be in a religious pigsty mm. where everything is unclean. And if you are not careful, you are so desperate that you get to the place that you say, I don't have no other source but to eat something like this too. And you begin to eat of that unclean food because it's the only source that you think. But even then, you find that it doesn't fill you up. You are not allowed to get the satisfaction from it. That's why you go to, to a service and you come out empty or, or even worse. Because you're not getting food for your soul. Your soul is starving. Your soul is in an unclean place. And uh, the Bible says that nobody cared. You read that. No man gave. Nobody cared. Isn't it sad when so-called ministers of the gospel don't care? When they don't care. They care about numbers. But they don't care if you are hungry and starving. I sent a little message to Cuba now because you can actually, they started this uh, chat with Cuba. And a lot of the saints are actually, it's like a new toy to them. They're chatting there day and night. So all of a sudden I was able to enter in and they got so happy. And I began to put little things there. First I give them an exhortation, but then today I send them one. And I said, let's get out of the book of Numbers and get into the book of Acts. <clears throat> what do you mean? Action. Action. It's not how many people we have. But what is the quality of the people that we're ministering to? What are they getting? Are we putting them on the road to heaven? Or we just want to have them as a trophy? So nobody gave him. And really, what you need, nobody can give it to you. Only the Lord is able to give it to you. Only the Father is able to give it to you. But you are away from him. He can reach you, but he wants you to come back and acknowledge the fact that you need him. So he's not going to send you a little sandwich. He's not going to send you a little package of macaroni and cheese so you can, you know, actually uh, make it through. No, what he's really waiting for is that you hit bottom. And then when you hit bottom and you realize that options are gone, he's either die with the pigs, or you go back home and you acknowledge the fact you have sinned against heaven and against him. So the Bible says in verse 17, we are coming to an end. And when he came to himself, uh, he came to himself. At the same time, there was somebody that was his older brother that he was at home, right? And you would think that he was so happy. He was apparently in the house, but he was not really in it. He was just as unhappy and not mad and upset when the prodigal came back home. He was suffering from silence frustration. Silent frustration. We're not going to go there, but the Bible says, when he came to himself, what did he actually say or said? 
I was not born for this. I was not born for this. I was not born to be in this condition. The Lord did not save me from my sins and forgave me for my sins for me to be in this state. How come I cannot enjoy? We're here to assist you this at the beginning of the class tonight. You know why sometimes our experience with God that was wonderful is spoiled because men spoils it. Men get in it. And we lose the reality that this has always been and always will be between God and you. Amen. No between God and a priest and you. No God and a pastor and you. No God and a friend and you. It's God <laughs> and you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He always has been that way. And you know what? A true man of God we always want it that way. <laughs> a true man of God will never say, I have the answers for you. He said, God has the answers. Let us pray together. And that man of God will go to his knees that night and say, pray, Lord, I'm praying for Johnny. Or I'm praying for little Peter or for sister so-and-so. Open the way. Anoint her eyes, or knowing his eyes, help him to understand. Because he knows that the, the servant of God knows that the one who has the answer is not him, it's God. One time somebody came to me, and I'm going to close with this, and uh, he had been saved for a while, and he says, uh, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I need to say if things about you and my life. When he began to tell me what he had done, my mouth began to open. And uh, I said inside of me, the famous expression, I don't know who said it the first time, wow. And I was so honest with him and I said, you know, as I look at you, what I see is a plate of a spaghetti. I don't know when, where, where one starts and the other ends. But I know one thing, I told him that. If you, low, if you allow God to show you the way. No, I'm going to show you the way. No, I can't. If you allow God to show you the way, God will straighten out every issue. He had issues with the government. He had issues, I'm not talking about the United States. He had issues with his family next up, big time. He had so many issues. And uh, he heard what I said and he took it seriously. And in less than a year, things, started coming together, coming together, one after the other. And I was with him all the way. I was with him, I didn't leave him alone, I, I, I stayed with him. The thing is this, that no matter what the situation is, God has the answer. Oh, a man, a man cannot give it to you. When would you get it? A man of God will give it to you if God talks through him and sends a message. Like many times I have said, sometimes in a message, there is a message for you. Within a sermon, there might be a sermon for you inside the sermon. And that word of God, when God speaks to you, is the only one who can actually get all that mess. That song that we sing about the, um, the potter, he will pick up the pieces. 
and he will start putting those pieces together. I don't care what kind of childhood you have. If you had a bad childhood, you don't have a good example from your parents, if they taught you wrong, if you went to college or university and they put a bunch of ideas and concepts in your mind that today got you all mixed up, give God a chance and come clean. Get somebody that will really help you. Because sometimes you can get so mixed up in your own mind, you won't be able to think straight. You won't be able to think and reason because your mind is all mixed up. So you need somebody that can actually say, you know, God has the answer. This is the way. Let us walk together. And uh, the prodigal son learned that lesson, but he was hurt real bad. When he came to himself, then he began to talk to himself, not like a crazy person. But he said, how many higher servants on my father's hath bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. A spiritual hunger can kill you. You can die from lack of nourishment in your soul. And that's about hunger, about hunger. Hunger kills you slowly. Not like having a shot in your, in your brain, but hunger kills you slowly. Okay, so let us learn from this lesson. Some of you avoid becoming a prodigal. And if you are one, the father is waiting for you. He says, I will repent and I will confess and I will say this and this and this. And finally, there is a good ending at the story. We haven't finished. We're going to probably finish the next time. So if there's any questions, any comments you want to make, this is the moment. Thank you for your class. It was very, very instruct instructional. Thank you. Okay. This is a very simple lesson. We want to get into some deeper things later, but uh, there are lessons there to learn. We learn. Amen. Amen. No questions, nothing to add. All right. So let us conclude the lesson, the class. Thank you for listening, for tuning in. And uh, I trust that God will give you a I was going to say a wonderful, yeah, rest of the week. Today's Wednesday. After the yes, day. amen. Don't forget uh, See you, those of you to tune this uh, Sunday for our virtual service. It's going to be uh, some good news because Sister Kira is going to preach amen. this coming Sunday. <laughs> and, uh, and then the following Sunday uh, is going to be me again. So uh, it's going to be live. It's not going to be recorded. Oh, wow. I have a class on Saturday morning. And for some reason, I don't feel that I want to cancel that class. <clears throat> We're getting too much feed, uh, feedback. We, we are actually getting, there's a message there that I preached that we are getting. We got over 10,000 people. Praise God. Oh, there's 3,000, 4,000. They're coming in, coming in, coming in. What? And uh, we just give God the wow. glory and the praise and how this praise God. is going wow, out. It's, it's touching lives. That's what it's doing. It's touching lives. Amen. And I see it there. Amen. I mean, this is number, numbers don't, don't, uh, don't wow. lie. And we don't advertise ourselves, you know. I, I do not advertise myself. God uh, some, some of the God. people advertising me in the wrong way, but what he's doing is saying, let me, let me, let me look at this crazy man to see what he's saying. <laughs> so, glory to God. <laughs> so, let us have prayer. Uh, any one of you, I say that because, you know, I, I, there's a reason for that. 
So go ahead and one of you feel free and dismiss the class in prayer. Gracias, Señor, por esta noche. Señor, bendice cada uno de nuestros hermanos, Señor, y a Pastor Ale. Gracias por esta clase. Ministro, Señor, a nuestros corazones, a nuestra God. gente. Y tome control, Señor. Amen. Que podamos aprender de tu palabra, Señor, y volver a ti, Señor. Y reconocer, Señor, que en, en nuestro camino tú siempre estarás, Señor. Te doy gracias, Amen. Padre Santo. En tu nombre, Señor Jesús. Amén. Esa es la hermana Indira Bermúdez.